Hezbollah jihadis tried to outsmart the Jews. All they found out was how many limbs they could lose. They bought some old pagers and got their eyes blown out. That they're all morons is now beyond doubt. So if you think you're the jihadi who will outsmart the Jews, remember Hezbollah and their walkie-talkie blues. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to This Week in Jihad with the great David Wood. Good evening and good morning, David. How are you? Well, uh, Robert, people losing their testicles is a serious matter, so I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> I'm laughing. It's too late. Anyway, uh, yes, it is a big week. It is uh, exploding pager week here at This Week in Jihad. We've been having some quiet celebrations at home. But in the This Week in Jihad offices, everybody on our staff is very excited. And uh, the champagne has been flowing freely. Uh, David, what do you think? Is this the terrible thing? I just saw Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, condemn these attacks and call for whatever, you know, whatever the UN calls for. Uh, and yet other people seem to think, what a remarkable thing. What, where, where do you stand on this? It's, it's just weird how people will complain no matter what the Jews do. If they just drop bombs on an area, they say, hey, uh, look at them just dropping bombs indiscriminately on, on people when they're, they're targeting the jihadis who went to that area, right? So it's not just, they're not just randomly bombing, bombing people. It's okay, we know the guys ran and, ran and hid there. Uh, so you drop bombs on them. So, but people will complain about that. And then when they find out that there's a shipment of pagers specifically designated for a terrorist organization that has been launching rockets at them for almost a year now. And they say, huh, these guys have a shipment that's going directly to them. Other people don't use pagers anymore, but this shipment is going directly to Hezbollah because they know that phones and stuff can be tracked, whereas pagers uh, can't. And so, hey, brilliant strategy we'll get a bunch of pagers and that way we'll be safe from uh the jews tracking us and uh, anyway they put two ounces of explosives in a bunch of pagers and then the pagers blow up where in the pockets and in the faces of actual hezbollah jihadis who have been launching rockets at israel just tossing them over there whatever they're going to hit whatever they're going to hit women children doesn't matter just fire the rockets over there no problem and Israel comes up with a way to go specifically after the terrorists who are getting these pagers and people condemn them anyway. And it's just like you just realize that all Israel is allowed to do is sit there and be wiped out. That is the only thing. That is the only thing that the U.N. or any of these other groups would find at all acceptable. Sit there. Keep your mouth shut. Let everyone around you constantly attack you. Never, ever under any circumstances defend yourself or take out any of the actual terrorists who are coming after you. We're You're absolutely stuck. right, David, because this the, the key point here is that this was a shipment of pagers for Hezbollah. And no Hezbollah operative is going to say, here, my young son, play with my pager that is my official contact with my bosses in the my terrorist organization. They're going to keep that with them because it is important work and they don't they're not going to want people who are on the outside to have access to it so this was a way to have a tremendously high percentage of actual terrorists be the targets and a tremendously low maybe a record-breakingly low percentage of civilian casualties because civilian casualties uh are what the uh UN and the Biden administration and everybody has been on Israel about, although their sources for the idea that Israel has killed a lot of civilians, their source is Hamas. And Israel actually takes great pains to limit civilian casualties. But anyway, the uh, fact is that the uh, civilian casualties in this case couldn't possibly be more limited. Because who, who's going to have these except the people who got them and Hezbollah is the one who got them? Yeah, think about this. I mean, what, like what of all the things you could possibly do to go after terrorists, what could you possibly do 
to to ensure that you are going specifically after the terrorists and no one else than putting things in the pagers that are going directly to terrorists and which these guys would have to protect with their lives. You can't have your notification pagers falling into anyone else's hands. As you pointed out, no one else is going to have these. These are just these are just for these guys. These are very important. These are like if this if this was if you were somehow going to lose this, destroy it because you can't allow anyone else to be getting messages about what's going on. And even then you're even then Israel's bad for taking out terrorists testicles. Yep. And, you know, uh, I've seen, I see the, the lies, of course, are relentless. And I see people saying, doctors, it's doctors who have pagers. They've killed the doctors. Well, yeah, actually, the place where they went off in hospitals was a hospital run by Hezbollah. So if you're going to if you're going to be a Hezbollah terrorist and a doctor, you're going to have to understand that that involves certain risks. And I, I just have to say, Robert. Yes, sir. There's not a lot in this world that could uh, dissuade me from doing what I have to do, right? Like, I'm going after jihad. You're going after jihad. We're exposing this stuff. You can chop our heads off. If, 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 if there, and we're going to keep going. But if there were anything, if there were anything that would ever make me think twice and go, hmm, maybe I'm messing with the wrong stuff here. It would be finding out that the people we're going after can randomly blow off my testicles and there'd be nothing. There'd be no way of me knowing it. That would be that would be like, wow, OK, maybe I will do something else. Anything else? Again, you could saw my head off. I do. I, I, I've been doing neck exercises just so it'll take them like 20 minutes to saw through my neck if they ever decide to uh, to come get me. So not scared of any of that. No, it's not nothing. Blo- just you have the ability to explode something near my testicles anytime you and there'd be no way for me to know that's that's pretty intimidating right there so anyway i hope hezbollah gets the message on this one we're messing with the wrong ones here they keep trying to outsmart (laughs) they keep trying to outsmart the jews and the jews are just just light years ahead of them in 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 intellectual ability so well hopefully they realize that one thing we know is they're not going to get the message on their pagers. Anyway, uh, I did want to get this here. I know this is a little bit off topic, but I just don't understand why people say this. Uh, people, I, the, the broadcast started and I said the poem, as always, the one that Allah gave me right before the broadcast. And uh, I uh, don't understand why people think there was no poem. Did you not see it? Did it not show up? Does the broadcast not start when it tells us it starts? I need to know these things. And uh, I appreciate your help. Meanwhile, with the uh, organization of the topics this week, I've done it in a completely different way at the suggestion of several people in the comments after last time's show a couple weeks ago. Uh, So I don't have 50 tabs open. I have a handy dandy list right here with all of the stories organized. And we'll see if this works, David. All right, so, uh, meanwhile, aside from the pagers, there's been quite a lot of jihad this week, and why don't we start with Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda has been celebrating 9-11, which of course was just last week, and uh, unfortunately I was on the road. Oh, people say we got the last line of the poem. I think there's a delay. Did you you have have this, David? Should I read, read it again? It's, I gotta get it out of the trash here. Yeah, and j- just so you know that that happens periodically. That because uh, uh, keep it on, you're dealing with multiple programs. You're using you're using eCam, and that's going to YouTube, and there can always there can always be like a random uh, glitchy delay. It okay, happens. so here we go. Once again, Hezbollah jihadis tried to outsmart the Jews. All they found out was how many limbs they could lose. They bought some old pagers and got their eyes blown out that they're all morons is now beyond doubt. So if you think you're, jih- you're the jihadi who will outsmart the Jews, remember Hezbollah and their walkie-talkie blues. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just try to write one like it. Anyway. They can't. You can't. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely impossible. Now, um, Al-Qaeda, as I said, they have been celebrating 9-11. 
And one interesting thing is that they have now called upon the protesters on campus to step up. And instead of just protesting, they now want them to start carrying out terror attacks. Uh, what do you think, David? What do you think the likelihood of that is? Um, terrorist attacks? Terrorist yep. attacks. Mm-hmm. You think Pretty... we're Oh, yeah. On, on campuses? College kids? Mm. Mm. No, you might see something on campuses, but no, those college kids. I mean, it depends on what you mean by, by terror. Because um, you, you did have these kids, which I remembered from the Anarchist Cookbook. You got the Anarchist Cookbook back in the day, and it'll tell you all these things you could go to just derail society and so on. But one of the things was squirting epoxy into uh, locks and so on, because you, it, it's just saying just go around randomly at like banks and stuff like this and, and squirt epoxy in there. And by the time they get a locksmith to let them in, people have lost all kinds of money and so on. It's delayed, it's derailed things. So I've seen people doing stuff like that. Um, but as these, as college students and so on and the protesters and, and so on are being taught, just throw tantrums as much as possible because somehow this is supposed to get your way like we're all gonna ah this guy just squirted a bunch of epoxy into a into a keyhole uh so you know what yeah death death to israel death yeah, i'm down with the death to israel now ah these guys blocked another road so anyway as far as these guys going around blowing stuff up and so on not yeah i don't think so as far as them uh escalating a bit more and destroying more stuff and throwing more tantrums. I think that, uh, I think that's fairly likely. Yeah, absolutely, David. And also it's worth remembering that at Columbia university last spring, when the, uh, protesters occupied a building, they broke the padlock, broke the windows, broke the padlocks, occupied it in a very carefully, carefully coordinated operation. And it came out afterward that most of the people who were doing this were not actually students at all. They were outside agitators who were taking advantage of the situation. And so I think if that could happen, then it's also possible we could end up seeing Islamic jihadis, actual Islamic jihadis, among the stupid leftist kids who are demonstrating. Uh, it is always possible. Uh, meanwhile, in Texas... The governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, has announced that he is taking concerted action now against Tren de Aragua, which is a violent Venezuelan gang causing havoc in multiple states across the United States. Now, you might wonder, ladies and gentlemen, what on earth does this have to do with jihad? Well, it turns yeah. out that this bloodthirsty Venezuelan street gang, Tren de Aragua, is financed by... The Islamic Republic of Iran. Shocker. There you go. The Islamic Republic of Iran wants to destabilize and destroy the United States and the West. And so they see these groups of violent criminals and also of idiot leftist students on campuses, and they take advantage. Uh, Ayatollah Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran, has praised the campus protesters and said they're on the right side of history and so on and so uh that being the case it is entirely possible that we could see jihad attacks in texas from venezuelans who aren't even muslim but working in coordination with iranians with hezbollah which has been active in northern mexico for some years uh, or trained by them or financed by them at very least. And of course, they'd be just generic terrorist attacks if they are not perpetrated by the Muslims. We want to make sure you all get the terminology here, ladies and gentlemen. What well, wasn't wasn't Iran poor and broke just a few years ago, and now they're financing every terrorist group on the planet? I mean, they they were the ones uh, they were the ones calling the shots. With the October seventh attack, with uh, with Hamas, they're the ones calling the shots. With Hezbollah, they're the ones calling the shots and financing the Houthis. And they're you're saying they're even uh, financing criminal organizations over here. Where are they getting these pi endless trunks of money to terrorize the entire planet? Joe Biden. 
10 billion dollars to iran uh just a few months ago after october 7th uh he uh released he 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 signed a sanctions waiver this is money that belongs to the shah of iran and when the shah was overthrown it was rather sudden there were some deals that he was making for american weaponry and they were stopped at the time that he was toppled and the money was held uh frozen and not returned to the islamic republic because the american government successive american governments from jimmy carter on up thought that this was not money that belonged to the mullahs it belonged to the shah so they weren't going to give it back until iran had a different government and uh, Biden just released $10 billion worth of that. So all the money that the Iranians are now showering upon terrorist groups and criminals in the West is actually money that Joe Biden has given them. Must be nice. So so if I go take out some rich guy, mm -hmm. then I should get his money. Right. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. That's work. what that Joe Biden sense. thinks. Smart, smart. <laughs> Obviously, a man who's never been mugged. Come on, don't don't act like Joe Biden came up with that, Robert. It's whoever it's runs true. his tele. It's whoever runs his teleprompter and tells him what to sign. That's uh, that's who came up with that plan. You are correct, sir. Whoever it is in charge. Anyway, also let's go to Colorado, David. We got Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid, and you see what he's saying there. There's no such thing as aligning with LGBT. Queers for Palestine did not comment. Kareem Abu Zaid of the Colorado Muslim Community Center in Aurora, Colorado, he says, there's no such thing as aligning with LGBT. What do you mean a Muslim aligning with LGBT? I'm still going to call him a Muslim? Give me a break. What was the sin of the wife of the prophet Lot? What was her sin? No, she didn't have that resolute position that her husband had. Never would a wife of a prophet do something like that. But she was willing to accommodate. It's okay. Whereas Kareem Abu Zaid says, it's not okay. And of course, uh, that is something that Christianity shares as well, but not with the death penalty for those who practice it. But in any case, you have uh, gays now aligning with the jihadis, fighting against Israel. And Kareem Abu Zaid says, no, that must not be done. How do you think the Queers for Palestine is going to react if they hear about this? They'll love jihadis even more <laughs> for some reason. Yes, indeed. I think, I think that I think that Queers for Palestine group is like masochistic and they just like uh, they like the idea of uh, continuing to favor people who are going to uh, treat them very harshly. But uh, I don't know. You can kind of see it from both ways, because as far as what Islam officially proclaims about what's allowed, yeah, the LGBTQ community is going to be completely uh, exterminated if jihadis ever get their way. On the other hand, you can kind of sympathize with queers for Palestine, because you read all these passages about Muhammad and his uh, buddy Dihya al Kalbi and... And Muhammad would have his private meetings with Diha and say, don't, whenever I'm behind the curtain with Diha, don't come back there. And then one time one of his companions did and finds Muhammad asleep on Diha's lap. And Muhammad wakes up and says, no, 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 that was the angel Gabriel. And like all these people at different times see him with uh, Diha al Kalbi at his meetings. And he keeps saying, no, that's the angel Gabriel. Just happens to look exactly like Diha al Kalbi. Yeah, sure. And we're not supposed to make the connection with all these semen stains all over you that your child bride's cleaning off. So anyway, you can, I, I don't know. You can kind of see where uh, Queers for Palestine is uh, thinking that they have an, an ally in Muhammad. The problem is, the problem is, apart from some of the Afghanis and their Bakabazis and so on, all these uh, different uh, mullahs who uh, molest all the little kids in their madrasas and so on, the people who take over in Islam, are, are they're, they're going to be the kind that just wipe out the LGBTQ mm. community. Generally, uh, the understanding is that you can do this as long as you get married and have children. But if you say that, oh, no, this is my orientation and um, I, I uh, want to marry, you know, somebody of the same sex or something like that, then that is what's going to get you thrown off a building. 
Uh, but in the Islamic world, especially in some areas like uh, Afghanistan, it's extremely uh, tolerated as long as one is married. Anyway, uh, in a related story, we have Zakaria Hussein out of Calgary, Alberta in Canada. And he has been sentenced to six years in prison. And he was plotting a Wrong. mass... Wrong. Uh, Wrong. What, what happened? Get it right. He's been sentenced to six years of prison dawa. Yes. Dawa. He's been sentenced to dawa. You can't do anything to these guys. All you do is they do dawa out here. You put send them to prison to do dawa there and to raise up the uh, next generation of uh, disgruntled jihadis. Once again, you win, were correct, win, sir. Win, 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 win for them. Yes. That's all we ever do. So uh, he was plotting to murder, you'd never guess it, David, homosexuals. He says, mm. it's Pride Month. I've been waiting. He then referred to two different types of explosive devices, and the devices matched what was described in handwritten instructions seized from his bedroom. Was that a pager? <laughs> well, I don't know. He was. Un this is a, a few months ago. Uh, I... I, I think there's a lot of Pride Months, but I think it's earlier in the year, isn't it? Is it June? They have a couple different ones. I'm not exactly straight, no pun intended, on this issue. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there, I think there's like there's like some sort of LGBTQ month, but then there's a Pride Month. Wait, I don't know if that's the same. There's a trans. I don't know. I can't keep all. I can't keep all the months straight. Mm -hmm. Every single month is a is something, Robert. Everything. Yeah. Every single month is some crazy thing. And anyway, he was going to kill him during it. Uh, I don't know if he had a pager or not, but if he did, he probably doesn't now, but they'll issue him one when he gets out. Okay, we have uh, over in India. No, India. I'm sorry. Forgive me. This has to do with Hindus, but it is not in India. This is in Britain. And this has to do with this fellow, Majid Freeman. And Majid Freeman, 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 Majid Freeman, and <laughs> he uh, was Freeman. involved. Aren't those aren't those the dudes from uh, from uh, Dune? I, have, I don't know Dune. Dune's I think a, those characters are. I think those characters are called the Freemans or something. Anyway, sorry, sorry about well, that. I, I, I apologize know. for that weird interruption. I don't know. I haven't read it or seen the movie or anything. Um, uh, Majid Freeman it was involved in the riots between uh, that Muslims were when Muslims were attacking Hindus in September 2022 in Leicester in the UK in England and as it turned out Majid Freeman has just been sentenced to 22 weeks of prison, prison dawah, dawah in order because he circulated false claims about the Hindus in order to provoke local Muslims to attack them. And uh, the court decided that he intended immediate unlawful violence and that he had used abusive words with the intention that violence would be provoked. Uh, and he said, I should never have stood trial for defending the Leicester community. You know what be funny? Victim. Tell me. Some people like uh, take the names of the locations where they move. Imagine a guy named uh, a bunch of these Muhammad guys who moved to Leicester. <laughs> Muhammad. <laughs> Mo, Mo, Mo Lester. They go by Mo Lester. I am Mo Lester. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, just a lot like of the surnames, prophet. a lot of the Arabic surnames are just where you're from. Places. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I, I like I'm I'm Muhammad Al Lester or Mo Lester for short. Yep, it he there, he could be out there, he could be out there right now. Maybe you're watching tonight, Mo. But uh, we got we got another Mo here, in the UK, and this is from Lester. No, he is from. Yeah, he looks like he's from Leicester. He looks like he's Mo <laughs> Lester. He really, really looks like Mo Lester there. He's from Manchester. And Manchester so, the molester. Oh my goodness, you got me there. Uh, Muhammad Zakir Arif. He's actually from Barry, in Greater Manchester, B U R Y, 
interesting place for a jihadi to be from. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was stopped traveling in a taxi as a passenger because he was found to be in possession of a zombie-style knife and a machete. I don't know. What's a zombie-style knife, David? Uh, I'm guessing uh, one of the ones that you'd use in, like, Call of Duty zombie mode where you're going around fighting zombies. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good... It basically, is, is, is this, the zombie knife you want where you can, like, stab someone in the head. Okay. So he has one of those and a machete, and apparently the cab driver saw it and reported him. So he was arrested, and when he uh, was arrested, he put up a significant struggle kicked out at the officers and he shouted what what did he what did he shout david uh i am mo lester from <laughs> manchester uh or allahu akbar one of those allahu akbar it is for two hundred dollars and you know what's a weird thing about this story david this was in the daily mail and i'll tell you uh doing jihad watch for 20 years the Daily Mail is, I think, the worst newspaper in the entire world. And a lot of people get mad when I say that because they say, what are you talking about? The, uh, the Independent, The Guardian, and then in the United States, The New York Times, The Washington Post, they're much worse than The Daily Mail, which actually does report about jihad activity. That's what I was now thinking. I was again. like, oh, wait a minute. I've seen I've seen lots of articles from them over the years uh, yes. pointing out some of the stuff that's going on uh, over there. So what, what could your complaint possibly be, Robert? Well, it's true, David. They do cover it, and they cover it better than most papers. But at the same time, whenever they get to somebody who actually is trying to counter it, then they are uniformly negative. Tommy Robinson gets relentlessly negative coverage in the mail. And so does anybody else who dares to speak about Kurt Wilders. They, they had a big feature about what a terrible person he was a few years ago. And anybody who dares to speak up against Islamic Jihad activity is villainized and demonized in the mail. So also, I find that the mail makes a lot of stupid mistakes. And in this one, listen to this. Uh, Prosecutor Joe Ullman told Manchester Crown Court that Arif put up a significant struggle when arrested as he kicked out at officers and shouted Allahu Akbar, meaning there is no God but Allah. That's the main. Wait, wait, so... So Allahu Akbar is has the exact same meaning as La ilaha illallah? That's what the mail says. Huh, well, they've been covering this for years, so I guess they know their stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they know there's stuff like Jake knows Christianity. All right, we got uh, Germany. And we have a uh, the Stuttgart Wein Festival. You can go to Stuttgart and uh, sample the various wines, you know? And anyway... Oh, so, it's a, so it's actually about wines. Because, you know, if I heard that there was a wine, if I heard that there was a wine festival in France, I'd be like, wait a minute. Are they just having a festival where they all get together and wine? <laughs> or are they drinking wine? Either one would make sense. Germany, yeah, it's different. Yeah, if, uh, yes. Yeah, this is in, in Stuttgart. Yeah, they don't wine. Having, they don't wine. They drink wine. They are drinking the wine. Yeah, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. I mean, after all, it is September, though, so I guess beer is for... Oktoberfest or whenever mm -hmm. else, but uh, they're saving up. They're saving up the beer for Oktoberfest. Okay, so they're having wine now, mm -hmm. and a uh, a twenty three year old Muslim comes up to them with a knife at the wine festival, and he says, "I will send you all to Allah." Now, that you know, I guess he was just very religious and he was thinking that he would uh, help them to unite with God but what's interesting about this is that the police spokesman said that a 23 year old is being investigated for threatening behavior but the suspect is German an extremist background is not suspected and the man is now free again huh that's good to know 
Now, there's there's just so much about this. He's German. They're trying to tell you he's not an, an immigrant. He's not from Pakistan. He's not from Turkey, where whatever. But is it possible for a German to be a Muslim, David? Yeah, I mean that was that was Hitler's uh, ultimate fantasy was that you'd combine the master race, the German people, the Northern Europeans, and so on, with an ideology that calls for the subjugation of the world, like Islam. So that was his ultimate. That was his ultimate dream. So yeah, I'd be a little more creeped out by a German, by a German. I'd be like, ah, these guys are making Hitler's fantasy come true. Mm -hmm. So he, he could be a convert. He could be uh, from a migrant family and is second generation. In any case, uh, an extremist background is not suspected. What is that all about? I mean, isn't it kind of obvious when he says, I will send you all to Allah while brandishing a knife at a wine festival that he is what the establishment media calls an extremist? Yeah, you, you'd think that. Uh, we've talked many times before when people are always, well, why are they going after concerts and so on? If you're a jihadi, you... Uh, there's there are lots of jihadis out there who believe that collateral damage is completely acceptable. So if you're blowing up a building or you're blowing up a train or something like that, and you uh, and you're targeting the kufar, uh, it's they consider it collateral damage if there are some Muslims around there. Uh, but there are people who deliberately target um, places where they don't think there would actually be any Muslim in any sort of good standing with Allah. And where would you go for something like that? You'd go to a, you know, like an Ariana Grande concert or something like that. Not going to be any serious devout Muslims uh, there. Um, or, hey, here's a wine, a wine festival. Not going to be any good Muslims there. And so, uh, yeah, some people pick those kinds of places. So anyway, uh, seems like exactly the sort of thing an extremist would do. You know, it's weird because I've said before that um, I don't believe Islam is like take is going to actually successfully take over Europe. I think you'll eventually, eventually get an uprising before that happens. It's just the longer you put off dealing with Islam, the more difficult it's going to be and the bloodier it's going to be when you actually decide to do something uh, about it. Instead of listening to us back in the day when everything could have been dealt with completely peacefully, uh, no, we have to wait until there's no way to deal with it except for a, a huge uh, bloodbath or something like that. But anyway, mm -hmm. with the Germans, with the Germans, it's like in my mind, the Germans are going to be like the first Germans and some of the Scandinavians and so on are going to be like the first ones to say, "Nope, not happening anymore. We're not taking this crap anymore." And so every time you're telling me a story out of Germany, I'm like, "You're like, ah, this guy showed up to a." to a wine festival and I'm going to send you all to Allah. I thought they're going to be like, yeah, I feel Gluck mit das. <laughs> and then to beat the crap out of the dude or something. Uh, but then I'm thinking, then I'm thinking, wait a minute. Is that, if that were a beer festival, see, you, you went to the wine festival, right? You're already dealing mm -hmm. with a different kind of, with a different kind of Germany. You went to the right. beer festival. I think he would have got real messed up real quick. Like, yep. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, we got another one out of Germany. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Try that crap in Oktoberfest, buddy. You're, we'll you're out. You're out. You're not an extremist. They say, oh, you only had peaceful intentions when he was promising to send those people to Allah. Try that crap in Oktoberfest and see what happens. Mark my words. I expect I'll be trying. Anyway, uh, we got a story that uh, says straight out, the Associated Press says, an alleged Islamic extremist. So they're not lying about this one. Uh, an alleged Islamic extremist. But really, is he an extremist, David? Is it really extreme to go jihad? No, it's just pretty natural. In fact, we, we, like, this is something else we've talked about. Like for years, everyone wanted to say, ah, just, just Muslims, you just apply that to people who aren't actually following Islam. And then people who are seriously following the commands to subjugate the world, we call those extremists. Mm -hmm. And so... You, you you say that the people aren't really following the the commands of Islam. They're the they're just Muslims and people who are taking it seriously. They're the extremists and stuff. And never came up with a great way to fix that. But the the real solution should be like the people who are actually going out and trying to subjugate the world. That that should be Muslims, and then others should be like 
Islam light or something like that. Muslim light or some diet, mm -hmm. diet Muslim, something, something along those lines. I've never, never figured it out. Nominal Muslims. Yeah, that works. Anyway. Okay. So we got a Muslim migrant in this case from Syria, 27 years old, and he was plotting to uh, murder as many German soldiers as possible on their lunch break in Munich. He had been scouting out their, where they have lunch and he procured two machetes, each one 15.75 inches long. Nice and consistent. He planned to, <laughs> and he planned to attack them while they're eating their uh, Bratwurst. Yeah, yeah. Bratwurst and sauerkraut. With mit, mit einer Bier. He's like, yeah, they won't be able to stop me because the hands will be all greasy from the Bratwurst. They won't be able to handle their weapons. <laughs> Whereas, it, I'll, whereas I've just had, uh, I've only had falafel and it is not greasy. Have you seen Fahad Faran? Nope. Fahad Faran, like you probably, 12. yeah, he's very young. He is a law student, actually. So uh, I don't know what the deal is, but he's lost. He's 20 years old and he's a law student from Saudi Arabia. He was visiting Italy. And you probably did see the video. He went into a church. Oh, and, that was him. Yeah, he said that he hoped the Christians would die. He wanted to destroy the cross of Christ. Uh, he said, let me get some of the other things here. He said that he will kill someone today. He said he, in the church, I will kill someone today while staring at the crucifix statue. And he met a well-meaning elderly lady wearing a cross, began to abuse her verbally. That is Fahad Faran in Italy. Little dork, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know, I'm peaceful and stuff, but sometimes people cross lines and it's just like no one, uh, <laughs> no one just slapped the crap out of him while he's growing up when he's uh, going in this direction. And some people just need to get the crap slapped out of him. Well, he probably was coddled by people who told him he was doing well when he went in that direction. Mm -hmm. And so this is, uh, what they get for bringing all these people into Italy and elsewhere. All right, we got a Belgian court, and they sentenced a couple of jihadis to prison. Dawa, 15 and 8 years respectively. Abu Bakar S. and his accomplices had planned to attack a target in a Jewish neighborhood of Antwerp, as well as a gay bar. And then they had also planned a, a trap for police and emergency services, that when they came to help all the people who they had killed, they would be blown up themselves. That's actually pretty creepy because uh, a lot of these guys aren't exactly criminal masterminds. And so, you know, they come up with a plan. We saw it for years after 9-11. I was, I mean, I was counting because I lived in New York, but I was counting where like 12 terrorist attacks in New York City were all foiled. Um, and it's usually because, you know, you have some idiot going, I'm going to blow something up. And he goes around the mosque. Hey, anyone know where I get a bomb? I want to get a bomb. Hey, hey, Ahmed, can you tell me where I get a bomb? You can't tell me? Oh, oh no, hey, Abdul, Abdul, uh, you tell me where I get a bomb? And then someone snitches on him and then the guy uh, gets, they hand the guy a fake bomb and stuff to see if he's actually going to use it. And then he goes out. And anyway, they, they catch him. Anyway, they keep doing that. It's like, gosh, you guys are stupid. You guys are really, really stupid. And then you start wondering, OK, these guys are these guys are stupid. They try to do big plots. Uh, and then some of them realized, hey, instead of doing this grand explosion thing where I'm probably going to get caught because I don't know how to build bombs and then they end up catching you when you try. I just grab a vehicle and like plow into people. And it's like, OK, that's that's very scary because it's almost impossible to stop. It's almost impossible to stop someone from getting in a vehicle and ramming into people and stuff. So you're like, ah. Okay, it's not it's not it's not brilliant or anything, but you could be successful. But what you're worried about is like an actual like someone who can plan inch something intro. We attack this, then we hit this, then when the services come in, then we hit that and stuff. So you like mass mass murdering and stuff. Fortunately, it doesn't sound like they were successful, Robert. 
No, he got caught. So it's back good, to the Dawa. Good, 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 good. Back to Dawa. That's good. So had a he had a uh, he's more, had a had a more brilliant plan than a lot of other dumb guys, but not brilliant enough to actually pull it off. So there. Yep. This is the sort of guy. This is the sort of guy who would have come up with a brilliant plan to uh, get some pagers and then get his balls blown off. <laughs> Speaking of uh, vehicular jihad, which you actually just mentioned a moment ago, uh, we have in Israel, there was actually an example of it this week, uh, and a an IDF soldier was killed in a ramming attack at the Givat Asaf junction in the Binyamin region. The terrorist who committed the attack was ident- identified as Ha'il Daif Allah which looks to me on the printed page like Hail Def Allah. Anyway. It's, it's kind of funny because Daif, Daif means weak. It's a weak Allah. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Weak Allah. Yikes. He's a weakling. I, uh, this is D-E-I-F. It isn't weak D-A-I-F. But I don't have the Arabic in front of me for either one, so I don't know. It's probably not the same word, but anyway, uh-huh, uh-huh. it sounds good. Burkina Faso, David, Burkina Faso. We had some Christians praying in church last Sunday, and Islamic jihadis came in, and they uh, ordered the women and children to leave. They tied up the men. This was during Sunday morning worship in the small village of Kunla in Burkina Faso. And they carried out then summary executions, murdering 26 people. Uh, And so this was just a few months after 15 people were killed at a Catholic mass in nearby town. Is is I haven't really been following the uh, college protest, but is that what all these college students should keep protesting about? Uh, all these, all so. these, all these jihad massacres in uh, Nigeria and Burkina Faso. Is that is that what they're is that what they're protesting? Because I keep I, I keep hearing about them protesting and like people blocking traffic and shutting places down and so on. Got to be about something like you know just completely innocent Christians sitting around just being massacred in the name of Allah. Yeah, there must be they must be upset about that on some college somewhere but not anywhere that we ever see. All right, we got 18 people killed in a jihad bombing in Mogadishu. And uh, the bombs were hidden on a street that is popular because it has a nice view of uh, beautiful Mogadishu. And I thought it was kind of interesting that they would go out of their way to maximize the casualties by putting the bomb in a popular place where people congregate. What is the uh, what is the objective here, David? What are they trying to do? Well, a lot of the, uh, the, I mean, a lot of the main terrorist groups have the same overall approach. They know that, um, they know that if you give people the choice between Sharia and pretty much anything else, people will not go for Sharia. Mm -hmm. The only time, the only time you have a shot with someone choosing Sharia, going along with Sharia, is if the alternative is complete anarchy. Um, Like a place where you could never feel remotely safe. You don't know if you could walk that. You don't know if you'll survive walking down the street. You can't send your kids out. Uh, You have to be terrified. You have to, you're in a state of terror. If you go to work, you're in a state of terror. If you're at home and okay, you're telling me if I just, we all submit to Islam that this will, there will be some level of order in society. Okay, so that's what, that's what a lot of the terrorist groups want to do. So they don't want you to have any level of stability at all. They want the, your only option to be Sharia or endless state of terror and complete anarchy. Uh, Because that's the only time someone will choose Sharia. That's it. And so it's stepping up in Nigeria, which we've discussed many times. And uh, we had the raids in Yobe State over the past week in Mafa Village. And uh, the Boko Haram group, that uh, Boko Haram means books are bad, books are forbidden, 
but it's not all books. It's just any book except the Quran, uh, particularly Western uh, secular books. Uh, and they uh, killed 125 people. And in, in they also burned down a number of buildings to the degree that most of the village is now destroyed. 125 people in one attack. But of course, in Nigeria, that's ongoing. That's pretty much regular there, unfortunately. In Afghanistan, David, we had the Islamic State, ISIS, claim responsibility for the killing of 15 Shiites and the wounding of six others. Uh, armed men attacked a vehicle and uh, they had apparently in a Shiite area and they were targeting Shiites. I thought it was kind of interesting because, you know, we don't ever hear about the Sunni Shiite Jihad in the West and yet it keeps going. And we hear a lot about Islamophobia in the West and yet, which one do you think is responsible for more casualties? Well, we hear we hear about it all the time. Uh, hey, don't call it Islamic terror because the main victims of this terror are Muslims themselves. Oh yeah, right. Well, because true. it's actual right because it's actually commanded in Islam. Surah nine, verse seventy three. Muhammad said that he's been commanded to fight not only unbelievers but also hypocrites. So you wage jihad not only against non-Muslims, but also against Muslims that aren't following your variety of Islam correctly. Mm -hmm. And so this, this continues going on. Uh, Muhammad, according to the Sunni uh, traditions, was asked, what's the best generation of Muslims ever? And he said that his generation is the best generation of Muslims. Each generation will get worse after that. And the first generation of Muslims, according to those same sources, almost annihilated themselves by slaughtering each other in the name of Allah, slaughtering each other as hypocrites and so on for getting things wrong. And so here you have Western politicians and journalists say, well, ISIS isn't really Muslim because they're, because they're attacking other Muslims. Oh, wait. Okay, well, great. Then then the, first, the entire first generation of Muslims weren't Muslims because you had Ali, the commander of the faithful, fighting Aisha, the mother of the faithful. And there are, none of these people are Muslims because they're all fighting and killing uh, and killing each other. Uh, and so, you know, you've got these Western politicians and they'll say things and they sound like idiots to anyone who actually knows Islam, because from an Islamic perspective, wait a minute. Muhammad said that was the best generation and that generation would kill other Muslims in a heartbeat if they thought they were wrong, they were getting something wrong. So therefore, mm -hmm. if we want to be great like them, then that's what we have to do now. Yep. All right, I got a story uh, out of Afghanistan, another one. In Kandahar, the national television, which is state-run, has suspended uh, broadcasts because in Kandahar they were airing images of living beings. Hmm. And so that can't be done because uh, obviously there's no representation of living beings in Islam. Order came straight from Hibatullah Akhundzada, the supreme leader of Afghanistan. Yeah, Diha Al Kalbi didn't like pictures. <laughs> wouldn't but come anyway. to Muhammad. Wouldn't come to Muhammad's house for his little rendezvous if he saw pictures around or puppies. Yep. So. What's interesting about this is that as the Taliban is closing down broadcast networks for depicting human beings, we have Leila Putana, and she is running for office in Belgium, but she is Afghan. Now, you might notice, David, that that image is actually not of a human being. Yeah, I was thinking that looks like a Barbie doll. Yes, that is... <laughs> Okay, so this is the story. Leila Putana uh, is on the Green List. <coughs> the Green Party, the Environmental Party, they are. she's one of their candidates for the upcoming elections. But she uh, has refused to be photographed for campaign posters because she's from Afghanistan and images of living beings are forbidden. So that is 
uh, what they're putting on posters. <laughs> Vote for the this Barbie doll. So wait, she's going to be, she's expecting to be uh, voted in and no one's ever going to take her picture? Apparently. Good luck with that. Well, if Belgium continues to Islamize, it won't be a problem. A wage jihad on all cameras. Yes. All right. Uh, hey, David, a big story that we should hit before we go is one that we discussed some months ago, as a matter of fact, it was even the name of the episode, uh, uh, Tariq Ramadan edition. Tariq Ramadan. Oh, one of the, saw that. Yeah, one of the foremost Muslim intellectuals, one of the most famous moderate Muslims in the West. Uh, he was called, let me see, I got some of these here. Salon called him the Muslim Martin Luther. Time magazine yep. put him on their list of the hundred most influential people in the world. So you foreign... know he's good. <laughs> foreign policy put him on the list of the top one hundred global thinkers. I'm but liking he... this guy. Yeah, he has been he's convicted. Really good. Convicted of rape, David. What? Yeah. Why'd you ruin that? You had me thinking this is like the greatest Muslim of all time. <laughs> and these stories always have to. These stories always have to end with uh, rape, child molestation, or slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah. Yeah, and it's particularly ugly. It's particularly brutal. Tariq Ramadan was accused of, uh, let's see, I got some of it here. Blows to the face and body, forced sodomy, rape with an object, various humiliations, including being dragged by the hair to the bathtub and urinated upon. And he told one of the accusers that he was raping her because she was not wearing a hijab. So uh, somebody is saying another episode about Tariq Ramadan. Well, there's breaking news, you see, ladies and gentlemen, that he was not he was charged before with rape when we talked about him then. Or he went on trial, actually. And now the trial is completed. He was actually exonerated originally, but then on appeal, he was found guilty. And so, uh, and not only that, but there are many other accusers who are waiting for their trials to come. So Tariq Ramadan is uh, an interesting guy because he was hailed as the great moderate hope for years. And he was the guy who was going to show us the way to a Western, westernized Islam that would be completely compatible with Western secular democracy. Well, if... Uh... If the great moderate, if the great moderate Muslim of our time is a uh, is that misogynistic and violent and uh, of a rapist, uh, imagine what an extremist would be like. Yeah, well, somebody mentioned golden showers in the comments, and I thought, yeah, we heard about that from Muhammad Hijab. Yeah, so uh, probably his, Hijab is probably watching the videos that uh, Tariq was sending out to his buddies. Yeah. Hey, look at me pee. Look at me peeing on this girl. Oh, yes, the golden showers. The golden showers. Let me send messages to David and AP about this. Uh -huh. Hey, you're talking about Britain's next prime minister, buddy. Yeah, you gotta. I mean, like, like, I'm trying to I'm trying to think who. What other group has like leaders this dysfunction, this massively dysfunctional? I mean, we look at like political leaders and stuff in the West. We're like, what? What is anyone thinking and so on? But I mean, compared to the like the Dawa, the Dawa is mm -hmm. everything is everything is uh, sane. Everything seems sane by comparison. It isn't. But speaking of insane, thank you for the lovely segue. Sweden is offering thirty four thousand dollars to Muslim migrants if they'll just go home. Thirty-four grand, David. What do you think? Is it a deal? Are they going to take it? Um, no. I mean, you know, a lot of these guys probably come from places where thirty-four grand is a uh, is a lot of money. But these guys came to Western nations for a reason. A lot of them, it's just like, hey, I can go over there and do whatever I want. No one's ever going to stop me. And if anyone tries to stop me, I just scream Islamophobe, and they all cringe in terror and so on. So it's like, hey, I can I can go over there and just live like a king, and and all the other all the other perks as well that we've heard about, like it, you know, Islam allows polygamy. You can marry uh, four wives and be constantly trading them out and so on. But in Muslim countries, uh, you have to be fairly wealthy to pull that off in a lot of places. 
but they understand. They bright they pointed it out for years. If you can just get to a Western nation, you can actually be polygamous and have all these different wives in different houses, which you couldn't afford in your own country, because you go there, you get your marriages all done in a mosque. There is no official state recognition. And so you get your marriages done in, in the mosque. But as far as the state is concerned, these ladies are all single mothers. And so the state pays for them. The state pays for them. You have four separate rev residences for your four wives and all your kids and so on. And the state is basically paying you to be polygamous. And so it's in their mind. We just get over there. Whoa, we can we can live it up and live the Islamic dream. And Western governments will pay for everything. Western pa taxpayers mm -hmm. will pay for everything. So you think one of these guys, these guys are going to say, oh, here's the thir here's 34 grand to just derail everything you're doing right now. Yeah, it's so. not going to work. I also think it'll probably create a pipeline, circular pipeline, with uh, oh guys yeah, take thirty four grand, take it back, and then come back, and then just yeah. come back in because it's so easy to get back in. Yeah, get another thirty four. Uh, it's uh, it, it's just crazy. Also, they if they just stay, as you say, they're going to get much more than thirty four grand in welfare. And we should also remember chapter four, verse one hundred of the Quran: Whoever emigrates for the sake of Allah will find much refuge and abundance in the earth. And whoever forsakes his home, a refugee for Allah and his messenger, and death overtakes him, his reward is then obligatory upon Allah. Nice. So this guy, he's taking advantage of that. This is a uh, TikTok guy in Germany. I don't know his name, but he just published a video from which that still is taken, gloating. And he is got his German passport, and he kisses the passport. He's waving it around, and he says to the Germans, You are helpless. I have conquered your land. Everything is under my feet. And I think you got a point, buddy. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Germans are so stupid about this. It's incredible. There's a story out of... Uh, uh, so, uh, nope, I can't tell where it's from. Um, but in any case, a Syrian migrant armed with a knife. Oh, I'm sorry, Berlin. There it is, Berlin. He's in Berlin and he's got a knife. He storms a gas station and he screams, Allahu Akbar. All right. And then the public prosecutor denies, erases Allahu Akbar from the police report and covers up that it's a Syrian migrant. But the problem is the initial police report did say he's a Syrian migrant and screamed Allahu Akbar. Then they took it out. But this time they got caught out. Hmm. Still, it's uh, it's crazy that, I mean, they're covering for these guys. If the shoe is on the other foot, are they going to, are the jihadis going to cover for the German authorities? Uh, no, and e if this were if this were a non-Muslim, they the, even the German authorities would not be uh, trying to cover anything up. If this were a, if this were a, if this were someone on the far right, they they'd be putting his picture all over the news and so on. And yep, that's right. Okay, so let's uh, end up with. Uh, let's see. I know I got him here. Yep, old our old pal Pope Frank. Super smart. <laughs> and Pope Francis has said uh, that uh, all religions are a path to God. They are like different languages in order to arrive at God. But God is God for all. Since God is God for all, then we are all children of God. If you start to fight, my religion is more important than yours, mine is true and yours isn't, where will that lead us? There's only one God, and each of us has a language to arrive at God. Some are Sikhs, Muslims, Hindus, Christians... And they're all different paths. Now, taking just Islam and Christianity, David, why is that absolutely not even possibly true? Well, they contain contradictory teachings on fundamental doctrines. And so, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, unless you're declaring yourself Aristotle's nemesis and uh, <laughs> logic, the basically the law of contradiction goes out the window, very weird to say that all these are paths to the same God. But, it, you know, the other problem here is 
Fortunately, fortunately, there are tons of people who aren't buying uh, what the Pope says anymore, even, even among lots of Catholics. But the people who would still listen to him, the people who would still listen to him on something like this, guess what? They ain't Muslims. That's for sure. In other words, in other words, it's similar to it's similar to like what the uh, what the new atheists did in that they're they're blasting away at religion, but they're around mostly Christians and Muslims and the Muslim. They're not they're not listening to these guys. So if you're hey, we need to turn people away from religion and turn to atheism, and you're really making a case, hey, we'll get a scientific utopia if we all just become atheists and so on. The people who would buy into that are basically a bunch of young people who are who, who are growing up in Christian households and stuff. And then they're like, oh, really? The smart people are doing this? In other words, I mean, you do have you do have Muslims who are who are becoming atheists and so on. I'm just saying the main people that 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 would impact would be a, a would be Christians in a Christian uh, in, in Christian nations. And so what you're doing is you're weakening Christianity over time. And Islam isn't falling for the same thing. It, it is again, it is to an extent. But, you know, if you're you're massively weakening Christianity and Islam isn't massively weakened in the same way, then you're basically setting the stage for Islam to come in and crush you. And it's the same thing with the pope right there. Uh, Muslims aren't listening to him going, well, great point. All paths lead to God. They're not. But you will have you will have some people who've been you know, who've been pretty woke Christians and so on going, wow, what a great point. That's what I've always thought myself. All these paths lead to God and so on. And you're basically clearing, you're basically clearing the ground to be subjugated. So you're sitting there saying, oh, this will just lead to conflict. Well, you're leading to your entire culture and, and all of Europe being subjugated in the name of Allah when you clear the path for a slum like that. So yes, indeed. pretty stupid, pretty stupid. Pope seems like a dope. Sorry, everyone out there, but I'm not sorry. Yes, indeed. And so on that optimistic note, we conclude this week of This Week in Jihad, the uh, Exploding Pager edition. And we'll be, God willing, back next week with more Jihad. Where there is Jihad, there we are. And until then, pray, hope, and don't worry.